Sound Experience. Put your hands together. All right. These are the real go-getters. Who's got some energy still? Put your hands up. You got energy? Yes. All right. Well, let me just share something with you. Who noticed that when Marshall asked everyone to come to the front, the energy of the whole room rose? Right. So what I'd ask you to do, if you're in the back, move up to the first three rows so that the speakers coming up will have that energy. So get up out of your seat and come forward, especially for this next presenter because it's an interactive experience. She's got actually something in store for you. So as Marshall said, if you're not willing to do the small things, you're not willing to do the big things. Move on up to the front and grab the seat because it's going to be an interactive presentation. But you're in for a treat. I first crossed paths with our next speaker back in 2005. And in internet years, that only, well, real years, that's about 14 years. But internet years, that's like a million years. That's a long time ago. Who agrees? Things move fast online, right? Well, that wasn't when she just started. She began selling online in 1996. I was still in the daggum Marine Corps in 1996. Holy cow, that's like, that's like dinosaur ages, yet she still looks younger than me. So anyhow, uh, she's been online more than, than I've been in the entrepreneurial space. I didn't obviously get to that until I was out of the Marine Corps. She is a recovering Amazon seller. I chuckled when I read that because who's ever sold something in Amazon and kind of been screwed? <laughs> I, got, I shipped stuff out and people claimed, even though I had the delivery form that said it got delivered, oh, I never received it. Anyone had stuff like that happen? So she's a recovering Amazon seller. She's the creator of the Bundle Masterclass. She likes giving her presentations in a workshop type environment. So she wants to have that interactivity. Who's going to be interactive? Raise your hand if you're going to be interactive. Yes, it's going to be an interactive experience. And you're going to leave with a list of fanatical niche markets that you can start building out right away. Think about that. If you could leave here with a fanatical list of niche markets, who would be excited about that? Put your hands together. Put your hands together if that excites you. She also is a producer of the Women's Web Workshop. There's a lot of men in the marketing community. She, this is one of the first all-women web workshops, so she wants to empower the women who are on this journey as well. So, ladies and gentlemen, get up out of your chair. Put your hands together for Barbara Draska. Thank you. Thank you. Wow. Thank you guys for being here today. Uh, Marshall Silver. What do you say about this guy? Is he like a powerhouse? Holy cow. So anybody have stage fright? Follow him. That's amazing. The energy he creates in the room, a little bit intimidating, but I got a story to tell you about Marshall when I found out that I was following him. I'll tell you that in a minute, so stay tuned. First, I want to thank you for the Groove Cart team. You guys are phenomenal putting this event together. All these, you know, uh, these lovely people in the back with these great striped shirts, everybody organizing this event who are just working their butts off. So thank you, and thank you for inviting me to speak and share my knowledge with you. So I've got a promise for you. So I promise that in the short time that, I, that we have together today, that I'm going to give you as much content, usable content, that I possibly can in this short time. And my goal is that each one of you walks away with at least one idea for a fanatical niche market, okay? So we agree that um, you're going to take great notes, you're going to take a look at the slides and start brainstorming your butts off. And by the way, this is interactive. Hi, Mike. This is interactive. So since we're such a great, small, intimate group, we're going to get to know each other a little bit, right? So I'm going to be calling out on you and asking you to uh, interact with the presentation because I believe that we learn best when we're interacting, right? Instead of just taking notes and then we manage to look at the notes three months later and say, there's no context, what did that mean? I think we're going to learn better if we play along together. So can I get your agreement to play along with me today? Awesome, good stuff. And if you notice, I put some chocolate on the tables for you, give you guys a little, bit of a, a little bit of a boost. I know we're coming up on lunch, so thank you for your patience, for being in this room, and for being all in with me today. So, oops, we got something going on with the screen here. Not sure what that is, but we'll just roll with it. So, I'm Barbara Drazga, and um, here's what happened when I found out that I was going to follow Marshall Silver. I had a little bit of a meltdown. I gotta tell you, I thought, this guy is heavy hitter. He's amazing. I started getting, feeling a little bit insecure, right? Doubting myself as we, we all do in business at some point in time, right? Who can relate to you? Doubt yourself in your business. Something happens, you're like, oh man, I don't know if I can do that. So I decided, I took Marshall's advice. I took notes while he was talking and he said something that really hit with me. He said, um, you have to take charge. 
So I called the organizer and I said, so guys, is there any way you can put me in touch with Marshall so I could have a little talk with him and tell him I'm freaked out? What do I do? So they did and I had this great 15 minute chat with him and he, you know, we kind of calmed down and talked and brainstormed a little bit. And um, so what I did to take chart was I binge watched this guy. I went on YouTube, I went everywhere I could. I went to his website. We, somebody registered the domain everythingmarshallsilver.com because I pretty much ingested everything I could get from him to understand what it is he taught, what his teaching style was, so that I could kind of transition and maybe calm down a little bit. So here's what I've done for the past couple days, not being a hypnotist and not being a persuasion expert, I've been seeding you guys with a word that's related to my presentation for the past couple of days. So let's see if all of this binge watching Marshall has kind of rubbed off on me a little bit. Let's see if I'm able to, act, if I was successful in hypnotizing you guys with a certain word. Are you into play? All right, here we go. The riches are in the. Oh, yes. But I only heard one person say it. So maybe I need to practice a little bit more. So let's try that again. The riches are in the niches. Okay, so today, if it's any surprise, we're going to talk about niches. Uh, and some people will pronounce a little bit differently, but um, when I pronounce it niche instead of niche, it rhymes with a lot more things. So I'm going to pronounce it niche for, niche for the, a niche for the uh, purpose of this presentation. So who am I? I'm Barbara Drazga. I've done a few things in e-commerce. I started back in 1996. Now keep in mind, there will be quizzes throughout this presentation. So, and I've got, see this table of goodies up here? Got a lot of fun niche products to give away to get your creative juices going. So anything I tell you on the slides, you might want to take notes because it could, it could come back in the form of a quiz at some point in the conversation. So this, it all started with a rubber chicken in a dream. This is one of the first products I ever stole on Amazon. About four years ago, I, uh, I had a betting company. Um, I had a, a couple of digital marketing companies, um, but I decided I was gonna try this Amazon thing. And uh, so I, I sourced these rubber chicken dog toys. Now in the background, you're gonna notice an orange cat, and his name is Gizmo. Hint, you might wanna write this down. Gizmo's my buddy, he's my um, inspector, he's my product inspector, and uh, um, he kind of tests test the dog toys out for me. He's looking at it longingly because he likes to walk around with the dog toy in his mouth, believe it or not. So um, that started my Amazon journey, which led to the ups and downs of Amazons, which made me a recovering Amazon seller. While I still use Amazon as a platform, I learned very quickly that selling on Amazon and relying just on that income is a really dangerous place to be, to have only one form of income from what platform that you don't control. And hence my recovery into selling on multiple platforms and using Groovecart. I'm all in with Groovecart, by the way. No other platform for my own websites. So I'm transferring over my WordPress with WooCommerce all into Groovecart. Uh, and I highly recommend you guys do as well if you haven't already. So now I'm uh, busy building out the niches that I already kind of tested on Amazon for the past few years and building those out into niche sites. So why niche? Believe it or not, this is a niche market, this gentleman here with a unicorn. How many have a daughter, a child, a niece, a wife, anybody who likes unicorns? Some, right? At least half of the room is gonna raise their hand. The unicorns are a thing. Now we don't need to understand a niche market. We don't need to understand why somebody thinks that's cool. We just need to know whether or not that niche has enough volume, enough people in the niche, and enough passion behind it to know whether or not we can make money from that niche if we build out products. So why niche marketing? You get higher product prices when you niche. So if you were to walk into a big box store looking for something specific, you might get, you'd have to wander around, spend a lot more time, and you may or may not get something, and you might get it for a good price, but you've wasted all this time finding it. But if you walk into a very specialty store based on a niche you're interested in, you're much more likely to find what you want faster, and you're willing to pay more for the convenience and because it's cool. So you have cross sell upsell opportunities that you don't have when you just throw everything up on a website and you know, hope that people land on there and sell. Fewer products uh, means you can be really highly targeted with your marketing. You can build an email list. Why is that important? Why do you think building an email list is important in your business instead of just selling stuff? Why is it important? Shout it out. Asset, free traffic, right, all of that. So when you build an email list, 
you're building the value of your company should you decide to sell it. It is an asset in your company that's worth more than just the value of the list. Um, and of course, the obvious reason to market to that list. Uh, you can sell advertising. When you've got an email list of people who are interested in unicorn stuff, and there's a company that's coming out with a new unicorn-related product, and you want to test out that product maybe, you could develop an affiliate relationship with that company to test it out and give them a, they give you a piece of their sales by you marketing to list and you get to test it without investing in the product itself. Um, adds to business market, yeah. Targeted marketing opportunities, pixel retargeting makes business sellable. Okay, so a lot of people say, I'm not creative. Who here believes that, you know, in your heart of hearts, man, I'm just not creative. I just can't think of anything. There's at least one person in the room who believes they're not creative. Raise your hand. There's no shame in that because there you go. Because at the end of it, I'm gonna flip a little switch and you're gonna be creative because I believe that we're all creative souls. We're all born creative souls. As children, we come out of the womb, right? And everything is new and bright and we see all these connections and we make these connections as we grow up. And then traditional educational system kinda you know, dampens that, but it doesn't extract it from us. We are all creative at our core and it's just a matter of kind of unlocking that creativity. So I've got a, I was one of those people who went to college and doesn't actually use their degree. I have a degree in corporate communication and a minor in, um, it was a master's program being offered at the university I was attending uh, and it was a pilot program where um, undergrads could join this master's program as a secondary degree and it was called, it's a mouthful, uh, Creative Problem Solving Leadership and Facilitation. So I learned all these great tools, the, the, the gist of it is, I learned all these wonderful creative tools and evaluation tools to evaluate ideas to be more creative or to unlock our creativity. So I get to share some of those with you guys today. I can't share all of them, I'm gonna share kind of a couple of the most important ones that'll help you out right away. Woo, all sorts of stuff going on on the screen here. Hmm, hello. Was that me, pressing buttons? What's going on, guys? <laughs> hmm. Technology. Well, I'm not really sure what's happening to the computer. We have a ghost up here, but let's, let's get back to unicorns, okay? While, while he's coming up here to fix this really funky thing going on. Roll with it. Okay, so who said they've got a, a unicorn lover in the family? Raise your hand. First hand I saw. Come on up here, sir. So this is a product that I recently sourced, and you know how a lot of e-commerce sellers, they don't show you their product? I'm not one of those people. I'm gonna share with you some of the products. I got this wholesale shipment in. Now, why is this cool? Why do you think this is cool? It has a unicorn on it. What else? It's got cool textures, yeah. colors. A canvas, it's big, it's roomy, yeah, lots of room in it, right? It's cute colors, it could be for a little girl or for a woman, you can put it on your shoulder. So, yeah, I so, do that. yeah, so what we did is we just listed some of the attributes of this that make it unique, and that's the first step in brainstorming ideas. Like, okay, this is cool, why is this cool? So, there you go, sir, enjoy your unicorn bag. You have to carry right. it the rest of the day at the <laughs> event, I'm just saying. <laughs> Congratulations. Am I, is my mic on still? Can you hear me? Okay, I'm gonna keep going. I'm gonna keep going. Um, do I have another slide? Ah, creative juices. Give me the next slide. Did I hit something on this button and that's what was going on? It's possible. Well, it's not working. All right, so I will just use this. Anatomy of a niche. What is a niche? Hey, the cool thing is when stuff like this happens, you don't worry that you're nervous anymore because how much worse can it get? You know, you get audio problems, you get video problems, you roll with it, stuff happens. You guys wanna know a funny story about one of the first times I ever spoke on stage? It was really embarrassing. Yeah. Just between us, we're a small group, won't hold it against me. Boy, I had a big, go okay. It's just between us. So I'm speaking at this women's event. It was after dinner. I was a brand new speaker, it was like 10 years ago. And uh, I was speaking on, I don't even know, it was something email marketing or something. And I had my question I was gonna ask when I came on stage. They teach you, ask an engaging question. And I had this question all planned out. I'm doing breathing exercises, I'm getting all ramped up, like okay, just ask the question. And the question, now it's after dinner. So a lot of these ladies in this room, are there, they're like, they got their heads on their desk, They've got this, you know, they're, they're digesting their dinner, they're, they're tired, they had a long day of speakers, and they're, they're napping. And the question was, 
How many of you would agree that 80% of success is just showing up? How many would agree? What do you think I said? How many would agree that 80% of sex is just showing up? <laughs> so the heads came off the desk, right? So they're not sleeping anymore. They're like, what? Huh? Did she just say that? I took this long, deep pause. I'm like, well, you know what? That works too. Can't go anywhere but up from here. It was the best presentation I ever gave because, you know, how do you go down from there? So anyway, these little glitches up here ain't nothing compared to what I've done on stage before. Anatomy of a niche. Okay, so you say to the family, hey, let's go to a restaurant, but everybody's feeling like Italian food. You go to a restaurant and you've got two choices of pizza flavors. But if you went to a pizza place, you've got 80 different choices. That's basically niching. So for instance, if we take a big market like the dog market, I would not recommend starting an e-commerce site for people who love dogs. I would recommend niching it down to people who have St. Bernard's or miniature poodles. Has anybody ever seen, uh, you know, you've got celebrities and people walking around with these bags with these cute little poodles hanging out, and the poodle's wearing a unicorn costume, that's called a mashup, by the way, and they have, you know, the cute little collar and a tutu on and bling, and they have a picture of their dog on a necklace. By the way, um, print-on-demand necklaces out there, what a cool idea. The table out there, you guys gotta go visit them. They have necklaces they can print your dog's face on that you, that you put on around your neck, but here's how you leverage that into an upsell. You also create a dog tag to hang on the dog with the owner's face on it. Cool, right? And then on the other side, engrave their phone number. How cool is that? Okay, so anyway, go visit that table out there and talk to them about uh, their print-on-demand products and somebody go after that market. So you wanna niche down, but you also don't wanna niche down so far that your target market is passionate but there's not enough of them to make money. So there's like the sweet spot in niche markets that you don't want to go too broad or too niche. So another example is, you got a kid who likes, who likes unicorns, and would you take them to a general store or that you know, sells pretty much everything and you might find some unicorns in there. You take them to a store, toy store where you have more opportunity to find unicorns, or you take them to the unicorn toy store. You're going to take her to the unicorn toy store. Not to be sexist about it, but I'm sure there are boys who like unicorns too. But in general, it's kind of girls who like unicorns. I know this is simple stuff, guys, and I'm not trying to talk underneath you. I just thought we'll get a basis for discussion here, and then we'll take off. Okay, so before you create or source a product, I think that a lot of us ask the wrong question. How many of you, I actually was talking to a gentleman out at the front table here who works with Groove, Groovecart, and um, I said, so what are some of the questions people ask you that they need help solving? He said, people ask me to help them find a niche product. How many of you have ever started with the product in mind first? You know, just uh, trying to figure out what product to sell. How many of you started with the product? Come on, this is play along, interactive. I know at least one of you have because he said some of you asked him, okay. So I believe that it's inside out. What you need to do is have a customer-centric approach to your market research. So identify the market first, because John was talking yesterday, um, he's got a different approach than I. He'll throw a bunch of product out there, and he says four out of five don't work. I, I like better odds than that. So I do things to mitigate my risk by starting, one of them is by starting with identifying the fanatical niche market first, really understanding that space, including the competitors, uh, what products are being sold in it, what products are not being sold, where products can be improved, and why they're buying, asking the right questions. So instead of asking, what product should I sell, I start with, what market can I serve? What passion can I feed? And what problems can I help solve through my e-commerce stores? And then the product is secondary. I know it's a little bit uh, different than a lot of folks think about um, niche markets, but I start with the um, fanatical niche market. Sorry, um, it's, it's distracting not to have a, let me try this again. So I'm the creator of the Bundle Masterclass. I've actually got some of my students who are in here. I see Carl and Yvette and Jorge and his wife are over here. And uh, we talk a lot about identifying the target market before we ever source anything. And that way we're not losing a lot of money right out of the gate. It's uh, easier and less expensive to test. So you want to look for niches I call mashups. So we just talked about uh, the, okay, so there's some ladies in the audience. How many of you like handbags, right? It's an, it's an addiction. I don't, I don't need any more. I don't need any more, but oh, if it's pretty color and it's cool and it matches my shoes, I'll buy it, right? We don't understand why we're passionate about it, but we are. So a mashup would be 
a handbag with unicorns on it. Now I can get, I can do SEO, I can do marketing to the unicorn market who also likes handbags like you. Come on up, get your handbag. So I like mashups because I can, I can target keywords. Let me get down off here. A little bit unsteady on my feet today, sorry. Uh, because I can, I can leverage different keywords into more traffic for two related fanatical niche markets. Okay. Yeah, it's still not working. Okay, it's all good. So first thing I want to do is feed a passion. So you see people flashing up, uh, you know, dogs, and these, there's certain images that will always be passionate. Cute kids, right? Um, any kind of hobbies, uh, different animals. You might not understand why, peop why people like owls. There's something about the owl image. People like owls and baby llamas. We don't understand it very well, but we know that there's a niche market for it. Okay, what is a passionate market? Anything that evokes a positive emotion or a negative emotion, but I like going for the positive emotion uh, just because I like selling in a positive manner, so that, that, that's in tune more with my personality. Hobbies, different animals, product categories. So let's talk about product categories. How many of you, same women, I'm sorry, I'm gonna be calling out women in this um, uh, for the most part. Um, how many women like the ones who like shoes and purses? How many like wallets? Guys too, right? Right, so, and guys like watches, right? You'll have like a dozen different watches. There's a watch lever right there. That's a product category, right? So I've got some wallets here, but we're gonna talk mashups. So remember I said owls, people like owls. There's an owl on a cute wallet. Now what if you had a niche site just with wallets? Okay, I'm, I'm sure we can figure out how to do print on demand for wallets if we tried hard enough, right? But you can source these guys, uh, and I'm pretty good at sourcing products, and I was able to get these for a buck a piece. Okay, I bought them in volume and I got a whole bunch of different ones. But I didn't just get ones that were black or brown because I like these mashups. So I got an owl one coming at you. Heads up. Ready? Boom. That's who I was looking at, that young lady. Oh, maybe I won't do that anymore. <laughs> Sorry. Did I scare you? That's all right. I'm, gonna, I'm throwing out $100 bills, by the way, later. I'm not lying. I've got a bunch of $100 bills up on the front, and they don't hurt as much when I bean you with them. Okay, so for the ladies who like shoes, how about I just come down here? That's easier. I can see your eyes now. Right, ladies who like shoes, who like shoes? Oh my God, shoes, right? Check out this little wallet with these high-heeled shoes. Hey, you want to know what other market these high-heeled shoes reminded me of? So I was watching cable in my room the other night, last night, and uh, there's some sort of reality show on for drag queens. Has anybody seen this? What a niche market. They need like size 13 shoes in women, high heeled shoes. So you could do a drag queen niche site with everything, you know, not only the stuff that they wear, but the stuff that they like. Okay, so here you go. Uh, another wallet. So how many, do we have any biker chicks in here? Any biker chicks? We got a biker chick right here. She eats fire too, so she's so badass. Oh my God, she's badass. Okay, so we've got a wallet here with skulls. There's something about the skull image. And this is sugar skulls, right? So it's the Day of the Dead, uh, Dia de los Muertos. Did I say that right? Did I say that right? Okay, so what kind of keywords can you get with this? You not only have skulls, but you've got zombies. You've got the Spanish words that you can keyword, do keyword uh, SEO for, right? Okay, here you go. Awesome, thank you. You're welcome. And it's this nice fabric type too, so it feels good. So you could do, what kind of niche, niche websites could you do with those kinds of images? I actually have a zombie, uh, I, paid a, I paid a joke writer to write me an ebook, um, How to Speak Zombie. I, I forget the UI, I think it's like learnzombie.com, I'll have to check, but um, he basically made up all these questions like, uh, what's the top, top 10 pickup lines in a girl for a zombie, you know, to ask a girl, and every answer was the equivalent of, um, it was pretty funny. Okay, I thought it was funny. Anyway. But that was just a lead generation in order to build a list of zombie lovers, and it worked. So lifestyle, personality traits, profession. Uh, I've only got 26 minutes. I'm going to go fast, but you will get the slides afterwards. Just come up and let me know. My phone number will be on the last screen, so you can call me and get them from me, or you can talk to the GrooveCart team, and they'll give them. So I'm going to power through a lot of these, uh, but I want to make sure that I give as much value as I can, so I'll give you slides. Okay, what are you passionate about? Here's some ideas. You guys walking through the hotel here? I get on the plane. I'm in first class. I'm snuggling in, and these cheerleaders take over the plane. So cute, right? So adorable. So the lady next to me is a cheer mom, I guess they're called. I was calling her a cheerleader mom, but 
I was wrong, it's a cheer mom. And she starts educating me on the cheerleader market. I didn't even know it existed, right? I don't have a daughter, I don't know about this stuff. Here's some stats I learned on the airplane here. Uh, they pay $4,000 a year just to be a part of a gym that has a cheer program, four to $600 for each competition. Did you see how many cheerleaders are going through here? I asked who was making the money. It's the competition organizers. But these little cheerleaders, they are wearing cheerleader earrings and cheerleader t-shirts and cheerleader sneakers. That is a whole easy peasy print on demand site just for cheerleaders, but cheerleader moms, you know, I am the mom of a cheerleader, I'm the grandma of a cheerleader. Uh, you can branch out just on people who like cheer. And by the way, there are, there's actually a good portion of boys in cheerleading. So don't forget that sub market on your cheerleader site. Um, here's just some passion ideas, and here's, here's where I got them. Have you guys ever, you guys know who Damon John is, right? You know who Damon John is? The shark, on Shark Tank, there you go, you know who Damon John is. So he came out with this, um, this game called uh, Startup something or other, I'll show you a picture of it in a second. And it's got all these cards in there that help you uh, just brainstorm niche ideas, like pet psychiatry. It, wouldn't that be an interesting niche to go after? Like dogs who have like emotional problems, whatever, but you're selling, um, you know, maybe thunder jackets and everything that calms a dog and CBD oil for dogs or whatever. So I was just sitting in my hotel room looking at some of these. Um, watchmaking, orology, who loves watches? Orology is the science of watchmaking, right? So I got a ton of ideas and I put them up on the screen for you, beekeepers, roller coaster lovers, because, you know, a nod to Disney, we're in Orlando. Middle children, like myself, we have certain personality traits that, you know, you can maybe, or left-handed people, you might be able to do a niche website for uh, even a tongue-in-cheek for middle children. Um, pranksters, train enthusiasts, crazy cat people, do you remember the cat's name? Gizmo. Gizmo, boom, you knew that was gonna come back to you, right? Okay, so you get, who said Gizmo? Awesome, you get a $100 bill. You ready, here it comes. It's actually, it's actually tissues with $100 on them, because I think it's a really good metaphor to be able to blow my nose with $100 bills and be okay with it and throw it away. It's like, yeah, I'm doing well enough that I can blow my nose with $100 bills, and all right. So that's the $100 bills you guys are gonna take home with you. Um, where to get inspiration here to Silicon Valley startups. Now, uh, it's like, you can get it on Target and Amazon, but don't buy it because, um, by the way, I'm gonna make you an offer to that includes this at the end of this presentation. So don't go buy it while you're sitting here watching me. Um, I've got some in stock that I'm gonna mail to you uh, when you come follow me and uh, nicheify me. So you can go to magazines, just go into a bookstore. Oh, what a wealth of information. Not only do you, do you get information about niche markets, but products in the ads in the magazines, they've done a ton of market research. They're not gonna spend tens of thousands of dollars in an ad in a magazine if they haven't tested that whatever product they're selling to that niche in that crazy cat lady magazine sells, right? So you just hang out in a magazine section at a Barnes and Noble to get, start getting niche ideas. Um, Pinterest, tons of creative people on Pinterest. Uh, how many mid-century modern lovers in here, like myself? MCM, we got some MCM, I know there's somebody out there. So we mid-century folks are crazy. I mean, I've got a white Christmas tree up in my house year round and I just change out the, you know, the, the ornaments on it. I think I've got bluebirds on it right now and I'll do zombies around uh, valent Valentine's. <laughs> yeah, okay, <laughs> right, Halloween, the other one. <laughs> Although that could be an interesting mashup. Um, yeah, so we like a certain style and certain colors. You'll notice the colors I wear are very mid-century and I don't even do it like consciously anymore. Like I pick out clothes based on this, this um, kind of subliminal, I like mid-century thing. Um, trade shows. So anyway, I was mentioning mid-century because Pinterest, if you just type in mid-century or steampunk, here's some homework, check out steampunk. Really cool market. I wouldn't have it in my house, it's not really my style, but super cool niche market. You can get really high prices for the stuff if you can find some really cool, unique items. And people, if you, if you paint something turquoise and you put spindle legs on it and call it mid-century, I would buy it. I'm that crazy. I don't care what it costs. I have, I have this trigger in my head that says shut up and take my money if it even looks like mid-century. But a lot of us do. That's human nature. Every single one of us has some sort of hobby. And by the way, that's to get you thinking about hobbies because I'm gonna give you an assignment in a second and you're gonna have to shout it out. So I'll give you a two minute heads up on that. Okay, trade shows, local trade shows. I went to a reptile show and a tattoo show. I don't have a reptile and I have no tattoos, but boy did I get an education 
on the tattoo. How many people are like really crazy about tattoos in here? How many, oh, we got a tattoo guy. Come on up. Oh man, look at that, full body tattoo. Th this is tattoo aftercare. So the whole tattoo thing for me is kind of foreign because ouch, okay. right? Oh, yeah. Painful, that's what in my brain. So this is after tattoo care, um, skin ointment that I guess you put on your tattoos. Yeah, nice. so, so why do you get tattoos? I just like its style. I like the mythology. Here's a mythology. Man. Yeah, here's a woman, and then this is all Greek. You have uh, Poseidon, and you have uh, Aphrodite here. Oh, I'm what's that? Is this like a dragon? Here. No, it's like an angel. And like an a angel, devil. an angel so and devil. Said, yeah. Okay, listen. Watch. Isn't he passionate? Oh my God! This is what I'm talking about. This passion right here. Thank you so very Thank much. You. That was awesome. Give me a hand. That was awesome. Right. So that's the passion I'm talking about, an emotionally charged market. Not only that, but he's got specific probably meanings. He's got the angel and the devil and Poseidon and Greek mythology. Every single, single thing that we just mentioned right here is a potential niche market for your e-commerce products. Make sense? Are we starting to get those little creative juices for those couple in here who said, I'm not creative? You starting to feel a little bit creative, maybe? I'm, my hypnotism is not working, okay? I'm trying it, I'm trying, I'm trying. Okay, so uh, Google is your friend. I'm always going to say that. Open your eyes as well. If I had, if I had just like closed my eyes on the plane and slept, I wouldn't have seen all these cute little teeny boppers coming on with their little tears, and they were in the, um, they were in the lobby over here practicing their tears. It was so cute. All right. It, it didn't look like this. I know I just looked goofy when I did that. It looked much more elegant than I did. But if you open your eyes, you're going to see niche markets all around you, and Google is your friend. Last night. This morning, 2 a.m., I googled uh, associations and I found this website. Write it down, Directory of Associations. Did you know that there is an association for trapeze artists, for clowns, for uh, street performers, and all these different niches? So don't go at two now because I want you to pay attention to me and be present with me here. Um, but go check out directoryofassociations.com and just start browsing through thousands and thousands and thousands of associations of people who have a common uh, passion. Okay, mashups. I love mashups. What's a mashup? What's a mashup? Two high traffic, right? Two passionate markets that you put together. Um, okay, so we're we're still on the unicorn thing. Can you tell I have a unicorn site, right? So how many have little girls who like superheroes, right? Superheroes. I dressed up as Wonder Woman one Halloween after one too many glasses of wine. How many little girls, you know, empowerment, right? Wonder Woman. How, what if they could dress up like a superhero unicorn? Talk about a mashup. Who's got a little kid who would be like super, come on up here if you got, I got three of them, come on up here. Boom, superhero unicorns, come up. You got them fast, 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 fast. Let's move. Awesome. You notice I put some chocolate down for you guys? You're yep. welcome. Put some chocolate down to get your energy up a little bit. Thank you. Yeah. Oh, I'm sorry, but I'll, that's okay. I'll, get, I'll catch you. Don't worry about it. Awesome. Right? Cool. Thanks, guys. Thanks for playing. Thanks for playing my game. Okay, so the mashup is superheroes and uh, unicorns. So I, uh, I think it was John who mentioned that um, in order to get around the licensing thing, I call it implying a brand. So if you have a kid who likes Disney princesses, what colors would represent a Disney princess? Shout them out. Pink, blue, purple, silver, bling. How about superheroes? Red, blue, black, silver, gold, right? So you can have an entire superhero site that doesn't actually have any licensed product on it that you're not allowed to sell or definitely not any um, bootleg product, but superhero just with things that imply superheroes by using colors. Same thing with sports, right? Okay, mashups. We got the wallet. These are actual products that I sell. Tom Beal's foot. Tom. Hello, Tom. So I'm out at the table out here last night. Can I bring it? And this guy's, he's got socks at one of the vendors. You gotta go visit him. He's got these really cool socks. And then I walked in and I saw Tom's foot there. I'm like, oh, those are cool socks too. Um, I thought, that, that's a thing. Guys like really cool socks, right? So if you did a mashup of, you know, superhero socks and, right? So a sock site. It's real simple, but all I did was open my eyes. I look down or I look up or I look somewhere other than what I'm used to looking at in order to identify a fanatical niche market that I might not have noticed again. And again, my goal for this presentation is not to, you know, brain dump everything I know. It's to 
it just gets your creative juices flowing a little bit. So on each of your notepads, when you leave here, you're gonna have one idea that you can start playing with and researching. So Barbie dolls, check it out, Barbie's grown up. Look at these niches, right? So a couple of weeks ago, uh, something happened with NASA, and it was all over the news. So I found, I found Barbie in an astronaut outfit, and then I realized she's got all these other professions. So girl empowerment. How about a girl empowerment site? Or even niche, more niche than that, girls in, uh, what is it when they're studying, like technology, what is that, STEM, right? Girls in STEM, and science kit for girls, right? Who, who, likes, uh, who, who likes NASA, and come on up here. And Barbie dolls. Oh, like, seriously, how can you go wrong with a Barbie doll? She's got it. Come on, you gotta run, girl, you gotta run. Awesome. Oh, she's gonna run in a skirt, sorry about that. So how cool is that? Awesome. That's amazing, thank you. Thank you, okay, you're welcome. Do you like Barbie dolls, is that for you? Um, I'm gonna keep it as a souvenir. I used to collect a ton of Barbies as a kid. Why? I got rid of them <gasps> because I didn't think the value would be that good. But I mean, this is really cool coming from a convention. I love astronauts, I love STEM. Oh my gosh, look NASA. at this. We just, all right, this is not a setup, I swear to God. So she loves STEM. Yes. She is our target market. What yeah, kind of I stuff would you buy for like children's your STEM? Teacher with STEM? Your children's teacher with STEM. Uh, yeah, I did an interview for it. I didn't go through because I'm not very musically and talented. But that's and okay, but, that, but this is it. This is our target market, <laughs> right? We, didn't, we don't start with the product. We start with this beautiful young lady here and we ask her questions. Like, what are you interested in? Why are you interested in, right? Thank you so much for playing. What's your name? Victoria. Victoria, thank you. Nice to meet you. Give her a hand. Good for her. So there's your target market. Have a discussion with this young lady and find out what's important to her in STEMs for girls and that could be one of your e-commerce sites. Somebody write it down. And run with it. Don't just write it down. I want you to run with this stuff. We're, we're wasting our time here, right? Okay, so this is a product I actually bought. Um, this is, so have you guys heard there's a new Beatles movie coming out? It's like a parody of a Beatles movie in July. So I got this liquidation deal of these shower curtains. They're fabric, yellow submarine. I am just, I've got the site up. I'm waiting for the launch. But I was like, okay, that's one product. So what am I gonna do? I bundled it, my bundle masterclass students over here, right? So I bundled it with a shower curtain and shower hook. So now it is a full-blown solution, right? By the way, we can deconstruct bundles too. So you could sell that and then upsell uh, that to the shower curtain and the ring. So you can do it either way, sell it as one product or use the individual, I call it a deconstructed bundle, the individual bundle pieces to sell, uh, upsell in the end. Okay, so I needed something to upsell this with, so I found this. We I know, not the girl. The, so this is a four foot blow up. She's a little six year old. Four foot blow up, yellow submarine. I got them on liquidation. By the way, my nickname in, my, in the industry is, what's my nickname, guys? The deal diva, because I'm good at making deals. So I, these things are really crazy, stupid cheap. Um, free shipping and everything. A whole pallet showed up a couple of weeks ago. Um, so this will be my upsell. This giant pool float, but I'll write some fun marketing copy around it. I won't necessarily market it as a pool float. I'll market it as a giant bathtub toy that you can use with your shower curtain, right? And have some fun with it. So it can be this simple. Who would like yellow submarine shower curtains and, and pool toys? Who would like that? Who's my target market? 60s, Beatles, right? There you go, um, boomers. Okay, practice makes perfect, you ready? This is the interactive part, you guys gotta work here. What is this? Pink flamingo, nice. Let's go. Now we know what the product, we know what the niche is, but who's gonna buy it? Here are the questions to ask, write it down. Who would buy a pink flamingo product? Wow, bird lovers, okay, who else? Jimmy Buffett lovers, I don't get the connection, but cool. Who else, who else, how about RVs? Shout it out louder, I need a microphone, I need a mic. Anyone on vacation? Anyone on vacation? Florida. Florida, right? Have you guys seen, there you go, have you guys seen these glampers? So there are these ladies who they, they refurbish these gorgeous old like 1960s campers and they go on a caravan together and then they park somewhere and they put like yard stakes out. They've got like pink flamingos in the yard and they put up the pink flamingo lights. This is a thing and that's just one of these little target markets. Okay, so thank you for playing along. You guys totally rock. And you had to know that I have pink flamingo stuff just to get your juices going. Okay. University of Miami. University of Miami. Is that a pink flamingo thing? Yeah. Are you a graduate? 
Oh, dude, this is cool. I had no idea. University of, there you go, sir. Thank you. No, you're welcome. He's really soft you and fluffy, too. Hard. Oh, dude, you're welcome. Okay, so um, on, the, on the venue of Cool Floats, got these inflatable cup holders. So this is a seasonal thing, right? So you're gonna sell more of these during the summertime or in Arizona, you know, a little bit longer. But these inflatable cup holders in the shape of flamingos, right? Great little upsell item. Every, anything you can use to bump to get that order value up. Who wants cup holder? Who wants cup holder? There you go. Who else? We gotta get further in the back here. You got two on this row. There you go. Thank you, sir. All right, sorry, I'm sorry, I'll get you. Okay, so check this out. Ice cube tray. Oh my gosh. So could you do now we're just using this as a starting point, remember? Because we want to identify what is a target market that's going to buy something like this. So what if you did just a website with silicone ice cube trays for the party market, but you have 500 different versions? Skulls, what else? Owls, flamingos, unicorns, Death Stars, right? Okay, I happen to have a Death Star ice cube tray, which is why I say, who would like this? All right, let's come over here. There you go, sir. Are you guys gonna get up and help me walk here? I got a bad back. Awesome, thank you. But I'm working it, I'm working it. Here you go. Hey, in heels and everything, come on, come on. Thank you, give me some love. You gotta solve a problem. All right, I'm gonna get a little bit personal here because something happened two weeks ago that um, led me to almost not be here. Almost not be here. Uh, and I, I had to power through it and it was not, very easy, but I did it anyway. And this goes back to what Marshall said, you have to take charge. So I'm gonna share with you what happened. This is real. So you know all those great uh, shower curtains and also bedding? I have a bedding company called Posh Linen, so I got four wholesale shipments in, in one day, it was about two and a half weeks ago, and uh, the, all these bags, I had a bunch of owl bags in these, a thousand shower curtains, plus the hooks, plus a bunch of bed sheets, plus a bunch of blankets, and I had two people helping me, and I've got a trailer, and I bought a house about eight months ago, and I built two warehouses on the back to consolidate uh, my prep, okay? Um, but me being me, I remember at some point one of my helpers saying, well, Barbara, I feel like I'm standing here doing nothing, because I'm in the trailer, and I'm yanking and pulling, and I'm lifting, and I'm moving things around. Oh, let me just get this stuff out of the trailer and rework it and then put it in, and about 45 minutes into that project, I went to bend down to move one last thing, and I went down, down. My iliopsoas, apparently, uh, and my lumbar just completely just failed me, just done. So, this was me. We're right now, instead of passions, we're on solving a problem. This was me, I've been vertical six days. This was me 10 days ago. Flat out, I know I clean up good. So I was flat out on the couch, couldn't move, back spasms. They gave me this pain pill that said opioid on the red cap. That should have been an indication right there. It was a stupid thing to put in my body, right? Which made me even more sick. Um, stopped the op opioids. Uh, right now I've got a little TENS unit on me and I've got a heating pad, but this is a motivated customer. I want to do what? I want to do two things. I want to stop hurting and then after that I want to heal. Now it's about this time, all I could do is be on my cell phone. And my, my world got really small, and I had these, now I had micro goals instead of unload trailers and prep product and do this and do that. It was, if I had to get vertical, which for me would mean getting on my knees and spending 10 minutes to get like this, I could only have one or two goals. Get water, go to the bathroom, heat up the heating pad. My world got really, really, really niche, didn't it? Nothing else mattered. And I messaged Michelle back there, and I said, Michelle, this picture, that, that the look on my face is um, pain, fear, and determination. That's what I look like when I'm in pain, in fear, and determination. And that's Megan, my little girl. Hint, 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 write it down. That's Megan looking over me. Um, so I had one, one overriding goal. I had 10 days to be able to get on a plane, fly for four hours, and be on the stage with you here today. Thank you. So, when Marshall said, you have to take charge, everything that I did, everything I put in my body, any nutritional, anything I did, 
was with the sole goal, the sole focus of being able to get, sorry, on the stage today. Okay, so thank you. But all I've got access to is my cell phone. So I'm laying there, I'm like, okay, now I've got a goal. I gotta get vertical and I gotta be, uh, have a level of pain that I can deliver, that I can bring it here today on stage that I can give as much value as I can without anything impeding that. So I'm a motivated customer. This is the start of my Amazon buying. I see you guys laughing already, right? So it started with a heating pad, to a TENS unit, bought two of them, to a, this is really cool, $200 infrared tourmaline healing pad, um, and now this yoga torture device I haven't tried yet, not capable of it yet, but I bought it, because it was a pretty color. Uh, three back braces, three different ones. Um, Anti-spasm tea to get the back to stop spasming so I wouldn't have to take drugs. And this is my last one. I now have engaged a therapist, a massage therapist, to come and um, keep my back healthy and limber after I'm done fully recovering. I'm actually wearing a TENS unit right now that's putting little electrical impulses to block. It. By the way, that's a, if you guys are into pain relief at all, um, it blocks the pain signal to your brain for a certain amount. Um, and it's, uh, it's kept me off of pain pills, thank God. So, thank you. So, $1,000 later, right? $1,000 later, I'm just sitting there because I wanted to solve a problem, be out of pain and get vertical and get back to my business. Thank God, I have a business that runs and make money. I have multiple businesses. They run and make money even if that happens. I mean, that's a great place to be, right? How many would like to be in a place where your business is making money when something happens? And when I say when something happens, it will. It will. This is life. This is life. This is real. Okay. So I've only got a little bit less than five minutes left, so I'm going to power through these. B2B markets. Don't forget corporate, corporate markets. I have a company that sells um, research products to the global energy industry. So ExxonMobil, Department of Energy, Italian Trade Commission, they pay more for product. They have a budget that they have to spend every year. Or they don't get it replenished. And they're not making a, a personal decision, oh, do I need to ask my wife to buy something? They buy it till they need it. So do not um, think about B2B markets, how you can sell B2B markets. Um, one, types of sales, you can do a one-time sale, replenishable, so that tea, that spasm, anti-spasm tea, is something that I'll probably buy regular. Um, it could even be something I could put on a subscription where they send it to me once a month if I end up using it once a month. Um, how to leverage a winner. You want to ask these questions. Write these down. These are super important. When you're looking at a niche market or you're looking at a product, you want to say, why are they buying this product? Why are they buying this? Oh, by the way, Anybody want a, uh, a beetle shower curtain, right? Come on up, come on up, it's your job. Come on up here, come grab one. I got four, first four people, boom. Got four right there. Awesome, good stuff. So beetle shower curtain, welcome. Hey, you know what? I know what you mean about You know what I paid for these, like in you know, overall cost, not the cost of the product, but lifting and emptying that pallet. So you got it, you got it, okay. so. Why are they buying that shower curtain? Um, what problem does this customer have? And what other solutions can I offer them? If, if somebody had sent me to a website that said stopbackpainnow.com, I would have bought everything. I would have been in the shut up and take my money mode. I don't care. Send me stuff that will make me feel better and get me back to the on the road of health, right? So that is a motivated, that's an emotionally motivated market solving a problem. So we're, uh, identify a passion, identify a problem. Practice makes perfect. What problems can you solve? Let's throw out some problems. Who's got problems? Okay, so who's got a problem to be solved? Who's got a problem that you need solved in your life? Shout it out. What's that? Everybody has a problem. Well, we need to niche that down a little bit. <laughs> Matt, work with me. Okay, all right, so. My mom was an above-knee amputee, and she was a cancer survivor as well. So she had specific problems related to being in a wheelchair, prosthetic leg, right? She couldn't reach the countertop. It opens a whole world of products that solve problems that amputees or wheelchair-bound people have. That's just one niche market, okay? Somebody throw out one problem to solve, so we can brainstorm it real quick. One problem. Anybody got warts? Okay, maybe that's not a good question for this, sir. Uh, sorry. Um, anybody hungry right now? We can solve that problem by sending you to a niche site with snacks, right? So you want to look for problems to solve and then feed the products into that problem. Oh, 
Gee, is that me, like, clomping on the stage, just making this thing? Okay, are we having fun? Tell me you're having a little bit of fun. Awesome. Have you learned one thing, at least just one little tidbit that you can start chewing on and brainstorming? Do you feel more creative? Awesome. Good stuff. Good. Hey, thank you. It's time for a giveaway. I've been throwing stuff away, right? So nicheify me. Here we go. $100 bills. I'm just tossing out. How about somebody want to throw stuff for me? Who's got a good arm? Because we want to get people in the back. Come on up here and throw stuff for me. Come on. All right, so I'm going to give away $100 bills in the forms of tissues, and I want you to all practice that it's okay to wipe your nose with $100 bills when you're making a certain amount of money. There you go. Throw them out. Make sure people in the back get them, too, and on the sides that I wasn't able to get to. Oh, there you go. Uh, all right. Niche market. Niche market. Baseball player, right? Another niche market. What's this? American Indian? Dream catcher, there's another niche market for you, American Indian. Okay, for the guys. Throw underhand, please, underhand. We've got 30 seconds left, but I'm going to power through it. I'm not sure it. if Matt paid the guys. insurance. How many of you guys actually wear ties? I know we're self-employed, right? We're entrepreneurs. But how many guys wear ties? Boom, come on up here. One, two, three. We've got three over here. we got four here. There you go, sir. All right, thank you. $100 bill ties. There you go. Now you can wear your money around your neck. There you go. All right, got a couple more here, $100 bill ties, one for that gentleman. There you go. Enjoy. Okay, so you guys get some ideas. Our neck to the necktie market, seriously. But you don't just sell neckties. Pay attention, up here. You don't just sell neckties, right? You're going to sell neckties with what on it? $100. Fanatical niche images, right? Unusual. Same with the socks. What if you did a site with socks and neckties? I'm, I'm a little bit over here. I promise I'll be, uh, give me five minutes. Can I have five minutes? Can I have your permission to take five minutes to, awesome, to show you what I got for you today and um, how, how you can get that cool game for free? So I've got a five-week training I created just for this conference. Okay, I created it for you guys. I surveyed, uh, I talked to a lot of my clients and I talked to um, some of uh, Mike and Matt's and Jed's teams asking them what, what are some of the, the questions you get asked all the time, the most, and it was where do I start? Like what niche do I start with? So I built this program to answer the questions that most of you have about creating your first e-commerce site and making it successful from the start. So it's a five week training called Nicheify Me. Um, it's going to be live with me every, uh, every week for five weeks with homework, because you know I like giving assignments. What was my cat's name? Oh, what was the other cat's name? Oh, wow, you guys are awesome. Three more shower curtains. Three more, three more, three more, three more. Who wants a shower curtain? Boom, who wants a shower curtain? Boom, boom. Here we go. I got you. I got a unicorn bag for you, young lady. Okay, so it's five weeks. I deliver all the training live from my office. This is one of Jerry Mills, is one of my uh, Bundle Masterclass students. Um, you can read it for yourself. It's kind of weird. <laughs> uh, Debbie Tremblay. Uh, I have a different way of teaching. As you can tell, I'm pretty energetic, even with pain. I'm, you know, I'm kind of bouncing on the stage. That is me. That's not made up. So all my training is very energetic, and it's designed so that when you, when you take a lesson, I give you something to implement right away. Because, again, I believe... I believe when we implement immediately something we learn, it gets inside of us and becomes habit. Okay, week one, you're going to unleash your inner child. I'm going to teach you a ton of tools that are going to help you be more creative, okay? Uh, week two, we're going to validate because here's the thing. We can be, there, there are two, um, creativity is, is a two-pronged approach. Brainstorming, but then you've got a bunch of ideas that sit there. If you do not validate them, against a set of criteria, it's just a bunch of ideas up against the wall that may or may not work and you're going to waste a lot of time and money trying to test these ideas out until you validate them. I teach you a matrix that helps you evaluate ideas, uh, niche market ideas, against a set of criteria that you create for your business. And that's week two. Week three, discover, unleash your inner choice. Whoa, that's it. Week three, maximize. We're going to talk about upsells, cross upsells, and bumps. I call this uh, go ahead and take a picture if you want. Uh, I call this deconstructed bundles. So when somebody gets to your site, if you're just selling that shower curtain and you've got nothing else to offer them, you are very limited as to the income on that particular site. But what if you had, um, we all know, you all know what upsell, cross-sell, and bump are, right? You basically sell them more stuff 
because you've got them there and you know what their passion is and you've niched down your website, so now you have other stuff to sell them. I'm really good at creating product bundles. I literally created the course on it. I made a lot of money on Amazon on my product bundles, owning the listings for the product bundles. I'm gonna teach you how to do that and deconstruct these bundles so you can sell them more by selling them, upselling them individual pieces. And that's week three. Week four, validate, oh boy, sorry about that. Leverage, it's all about the eyeballs. So you're gonna learn about where your potential customers are. How do you find these groups of fanatical people through influencers and Facebook and Pinterest? Oh my. And then accelerate, we're gonna fan the flames. We're gonna talk about persuasive copywriting techniques. Remember when I said that blow up, I'm not just gonna say, hey, here's a pool toy. I'm gonna say, here is a, a big kid's giant bathtub blow up, right? So it's all about using languaging to plug into the emotion that's making them buy that niche product to begin with. And that is week five. So we start, we're gonna start off, wow, sorry about that. Uh, we're gonna start off on um, May 13th and I'm gonna uh, snag you some bonuses. GrooveCon special, uh, $12.95, but here's what I'm gonna do for you guys. It's a small audience, you guys have been great. I know I've thrown a lot of stuff at you. I'm gonna do $9.95 for today. You've got till Sunday to enroll. This is a beta of the course. This, you are the first ones in. Um, I'm not sure what the price will be in the future, but it will be more than $9.95, but you're gonna get it for $9.95 and I'm gonna give you some bonuses. I'm gonna send you the Silicon Valley startup. That's all these really cool cards that gives you ideas on on 3D printing and creepy doll collectors. Can you imagine having a niche e-commerce site with just a bunch of creepy porcelain dolls? There are people who actually collect this stuff, right? So these cards are in the startup box. And then I'm going to give you my, uh, I've got a small course called Emotional Trigger Words, which is gonna help you understand how to copyright from an emotional perspective in order to sell more. So it kicks off May 15th, everything's going to be recorded, put into a membership site, you can watch it at your leisure, uh, you'll have lifetime access to all of the content, even as I add more content as life goes on. Uh, and um, uh, May 13th, I'll send you an email, there's my contact information, take a screenshot, feel free to reach out and ask me any questions. Again, this offer for $9.95 expires uh, 6 p.m., when are we done with the conference this, on Sunday? 5 p.m., 6 p.m., okay? And you can also use that golden ticket that they gave you when you came here, right? You can use that golden ticket against it. Again, my name is Barbara Rasga. Who wants to get niche-fied? I'm excited to be your trainer today. Thank you so much for having me. I appreciate it. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thanks, guys. Hey, if you have any questions, I'm gonna shoot to the back of the room and I'll bring some more goodies to give away. How's that? Good stuff. Hey, can we get some music? They're awesome. Thanks for playing along. That was so much fun. Thanks, Stanley. Cool. If you have any questions, come on back here. <laughs>